tricks that you can do with Microsoft Copilot. And just to um, give you this piece of information, so Microsoft Copilot right now, at least the one that we can use here at AU, is sort of the standard version. Um, it's not the pro version. So if you go online or if you go on YouTube or even Microsoft's website, when they talk about those really fancy and advanced features, that's not what AU has right now. I'm hoping that perhaps soon they will pay for the pro version because it is really incredible what the pro version can do. But what I'm going to show you is sort of just the beginner level standard version of uh, of an AI chatbot and things that you might want to start experimenting with uh, or how you can use um, uh, Copilot for admin purposes or lesson preparation or how you may encourage your students to to start using um, Copilot. So um, can you all see my screen? We can, the, the PowerPoint is not just the one slide. I don't know if we're seeing- Yeah, that's fine, because I just okay. wanted to share the link first. Perfect, perfect. All right, so let me just talk about the, the slides here. Uh, I'm going to go in and out of the slides and then um, to the web, uh, the co-pilot site as well. <laughs> and so what I also recommend is, and let me just do that again. Um, oh no, it's in there. Okay, so if you if you look at the chat box, you can see the link to my slide. So if you want to open that up in another browser or in another tab, um, in another window, then you can follow the slides as well. You have uh, viewing access to the slides. And so any links included, you can just click on those links so you can navigate the slides that way as well. Um, so like I said, you know, I want I would like to spend the next um, hour or so on and just looking at some basic um, steps that you can take in order to leverage what Microsoft Copilot can uh, can do. And so uh, Microsoft Copilot um, is a fairly new tool. And by the way, if you want to look into some specific functions of Copilot, uh, you can go on YouTube. They have sort of really high level um, uh, tutorials there, but they also have some basic ones as well. And again, let me just repeat it um, one more time before we go into the details that this is the standard Copilot. This is not Copilot Pro. Copilot Pro is the one that's embedded in Office, in Word, in PowerPoint, and so on. And so this is just the standard version. Still, it can do a lot or you can do a lot with it. Now, let's uh, let's start by logging in. So what you can do is if you're using, um, I normally use Google search. So depending on your um, internet browser, if you just type in Microsoft Copilot, um, you might actually end up with two different links. And so if you see this, this is the one that says Microsoft AI. So if that's the one that you see, um, this is the full browser that just uh, gives you a lot of information about what Microsoft's uh, AI chatbot is about, all the details. But what we want to focus on is this one right here. So if you type in Microsoft Copilot in your browser, so make sure that you then follow this link right here, the one that says copilot.microsoft.com. And what I recommend is that you log in with your, um, sorry, let's do this, that you log in with your um, AU um, account. So that's something that, yeah, let me just, So if you look for Microsoft Copilot, just like that, and you can log in with your AO account.
And so once you're in, let me just go back to my slides. So once you're logged in, you probably see this and let me know if you can see it, but this is something you should be able to see. And so Copilot is really helpful because it's already telling you, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna laugh? Do you wanna create something or analyze or write or summarize or templatize? And what you can also say is at the bottom here is, you know, choose conversation style. And I think that's pretty neat because, um, well, for instance, I guess if you want to, um, if you want to write, then you probably want to, or if you want to do some research, you probably want to click on more precise. Um, if you want to create images, if you want to um, create templates, then you probably want to do you know more creative or even you know more precise. So th there are different options here to to choose from. And so one, well, actually, let me just go back here. Um, so one thing that I um, I use Copilot for, and this is what I, I tell my students as well. So if you want to do a quick research, um, you know, you can, because, you know, Copilot is linked to Bing, so it is linked to the internet. So it will take you to through an internet um, search. So for instance, what I did, I told um, Copilot um, list or you know, find me the five most prominent researchers and experts in digital citizenship competencies. Um, and sure enough, these are real people um, with real research. And so once it gives me um, the result, it also um, provides the links to um, to the information as well. So it's it's quite reliable. It's quite trustworthy. Of course, you know you also need to follow it up. So you know don't take everything as it is. But you know this is something uh, to to discuss with the students as well. So typically it's spot on, but just in case you never know, it's good to do a little bit of you know background check. And so um, there's that. And then something that I did after that, um, I also said, okay, now go ahead and, uh, and share the six most reliable organizations in digital citizenship competencies. And, um, and it gave me a really nice link and um, and of course it listed ISTE, which is definitely the number one and the most reliable organization, the most well put together organization. Um, and I liked how it also provided um, a sentence for each just to um, just to clarify what the organization is famous for. Um, I noticed that it did not list an organization called um, Common Sense Media. So then I asked co-pilot, so what about Common Sense Media? <laughs> why, why is it in there? And it's like, oh yeah, yeah. So here's yeah, that's also a highly regarded organization. And and so it it went and and talked about it. Um, not so sure why it didn't give me this option since they work so closely with the ISTE organization, but um Again, you know, I show this process to my students and 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 I tell them that sometimes you have to kind of, you know, give it a little bit of a nudge, like, what about this? What about that? You know, asking those follow-up questions when you do a quick search. Um, however, what I would, uh, or the way I would explain my sort of um, internet search with Copilot, that it reminds me a lot like if Wikipedia was also an AI chatbot, so then you're talking to, it's almost like you're, you're, you're chatting with Wikipedia. <laughs> and so it gives you all the information. And just like on Wikipedia, you scroll down and at the bottom, you can see the list of references. 
or even within the text, you can see the numbers and it takes you to the reference um, list at um, at the bottom of the page. So it's it's almost uh, just like that. So that's that's what it kind of looks like or you know feels like once you're having the conversation. Um, and something that I also did, and let me just zoom in on this one. Um, so I pulled up one of the documents that uh, Microsoft Copilot shared about you know, digital citizenship. And of course, it's I don't even know how many pages. And I'm thinking, you know, if I have to read through everything, I don't have the time. So I just simply ask, OK, you know, looking at the table of contents, I can see that there is specific information about protecting health and well-being. So digital health and um, well-being. So I said, OK, what does the document say about it exactly? And I asked the question and it did a really nice summary. And of course, then I went to the pages and and yeah, the summary was correct. It was spot on. So it did a really good job. Um, and so my conversation with my students about doing um, this search is that um, depending on how, you know, the prompt that you give it, it can come back with really nice findings. Uh, it's almost like you're combining a Google search and a library search with, you know, the Wikipedia <laughs> level conversation, but then also you can ask it to give you summaries and, uh, or sort of, you know, comb through um, a long document and just, you know, to retrieve information that you might be um, interested in. So this this is one way of um, using Microsoft um, Copilot. So in the next um, five to eight minutes, so I want to pause here very quickly and give you the chance to do something similar. So um, give it a try. And, and so try to do what I just did. Um, of course, the question is, you know, what information would your students search for? So just, you know, think about one of your courses that you're teaching. Maybe there's some sort of research that you ask your students to do. There's an activity. So try to see what it is that, you know, they would do. And um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of time. So 1143, um, maybe five, six minutes. And then, you know, raise your hand if you if you can share information about your experience using um, Copilot to, you know, to research some information. And it's also um, beneficial, like I, I would say that if you ask your students to search for some information or to research a topic, uh, once you do this, you can also imagine, you know, it, I'm pretty sure my students are doing this. <laughs> so it's it's good to be a few steps ahead of them and just, um, just go through what uh, process they might go through. And so if you do this before you assign um, that research activity, um, maybe you can already tell what roadblock they might run into or what questions they might have. So you can already come to class prepared like, you know, and by the way, if AI doesn't give you whatever organization, then make sure that you, you know, give it a little nudge and ask. And so, um, if you do this beforehand, then, you know, maybe that's something that you can, um, you can leverage, you know, you can come to class and as you assign the, um, the task, you can, um, you can warn students about potential glitches or potential challenges or obstacles.
So I'm looking at the chat as well. And Karen, you asked about ChatGPT's research. I would say that um, ChatGPT4 could produce something like this and Gemini could produce something like this because they are um, connected to the internet. But ChatGPT 3.5 is kind of unreliable. It feels like that on certain days, it can see the internet and then on others it can't. But even four can be a little bit, um, I don't know, a little bit glitchy. And sometimes ChatGPT4 has those days when it's just down for some reason. And I know we're talking about Copilot, but um, if you're looking for um, YouTube videos, TED Talks maybe, or some lectures about a topic, um, Gemini is the one who, who's really good at that. Yeah, that's a good question. One of 30 responses. I only noticed that the other day, and I wonder if that's how much we have for free, like without paying. Because it's it's a fairly new edition. They used to not have that. It just appeared recently. So I wonder if that's like, that's how much you have. Got it. So I didn't know if that meant... I came up with. Oh, I don't know if it's. I'm, I'm just guessing. Query. Yeah, because the word responses is vague, right? I don't know if that means I came up with thirty responses to your query, and here's one. Or if, like you're saying, maybe with our license, we just get the ability to ask thirty queries in a certain amount of time. I don't know. I tried to click on it, and nothing. Really right, right. I, I tried to do the same thing because it's fairly new. Like I said, they used to not show that. And so I'm thinking that they are probably limiting the free version because there's there's um there's a big effort to to sell the pro version. And so that you know that could be it. Just like copilot. The, the number of words that you can put in Copilot co at once is also, also limited because they don't want people to overwhelm the system because they believe that that's one of the reasons why ChatGPT keeps freezing or sometimes it has those down moments because people are entering so much information that it can't handle it. And so they are limiting the access, I mean, the, the, the number of words so that's, you know, that's another thing. We're asked to rate um, the questions and answers with like thumbs up and thumbs down. Is there any concern over when you do that, sharing um, the prompts with a uh, co-pilot? It says that if you, if you're okay with that and if you click, um, enter or something, then um, I think they're going to use it for training, something like that. Mm. Okay. Now I would say if I ask the question, who are the five most prominent experts in the field of digital citizenship competencies? I probably am not, you know, releasing any, <laughs> you know, secret information, but yeah, this is when people can, um, can think about uh, those, you know, feedbacks, you know, what, what should you click on and what should you not? Mm. Got it. Oh, Jessica shared three out of 30 responses. I'm referring to the fact that I have a set of predefined responses available. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. 
So um, those of you who tried out this uh, this function, searching for information, um, what was your experience? Did you find anything, something was not working or the answers were incorrect or any feedback on this activity? Well, actually, one nice, I just uh, clicked on by accident on new search and realized that it probably just wipes out what, you, what that just did. There's no back button. Yes, that's <laughs> yes, that that's another thing. Uh, one of the disadvantages of a copilot. Well, okay, so let's just say the advantage of copilot is that you can click on save. And then so you can just copy the response. You can save it in a, in a Word document or in a Google document. The really neat thing about ChatGPT is you can actually just save the chat link. So then you don't need to copy, you know, words and words and pages of information. So it's just, I guess, you know, they have different. Oh, good. I'm, I'm I'm glad that you like the references that Copilot provided. Um, all right, let's move on to another thing that you can do. <laughs> and um, you can even click on creative mode for this one. Uh, but before we go into the details, you know, something that I want to emphasize is, uh, you know, is prompting. Um, Regardless of how many YouTube tutorials you watch about, um, you know, talking to an AI chatbot, they will always tell you that prompting and how you ask the question and how you direct it to do things is is essential. It's you know is everything. And when I talk about uh, AI and AI chatbots with my students, they they tell me the same thing. Like they they understand that. It really takes a lot of time to think about, okay, how am I going to ask certain things so then I actually get the result that I'm looking for. And so um, I copied this page from Microsoft Copilot's website. So it actually comes from the website within uh, Microsoft Copilot. They have uh, a lot of information about, you know, prompting and, you know, learning how to prompt. Um, there's a lot of information about, you know, the educational use of AI. So there, there's, they really went out there and they wanted to make sure that, um, you know, you can, you can sort of teach yourself. It's very user friendly and, um, nothing is written in sort of this, you know, highbrow way that only data scientists understand. No, it's very simple, you know, it, you need to sit down and probably spend a couple of hours or so, you know, reading through their sort of tutorials. But so one thing that they emphasize is prompting. And as you can see, a really good prompt is very detailed. And um, it gives AI um, the opportunity to understand what persona the AI should have. And so, for instance, if you if you're asking AI to help you with you know lesson preparation or creating your rubrics, it's good to tell them uh, to, to tell AI that you know act as a tutor, act as a professor, or act as a professor who teaches a 100 level course or a 600 level course because it will actually um, tweak its result based on what you're telling it to um, or how you you're telling it to shape its response. Um, and so for instance, if I'm um, rewriting grading rubrics or if I'm rewriting uh, lesson objectives or um, even assignment descriptions, if if this is for my students who are um, ESL students, I always make sure that I say that the audience is or you know it's for English language learners on an intermediate proficiency level. So then again, it knows that, you know, it has to be careful with the vocabulary used. Um, and also it's important, I don't know if you've experienced this before, but if you don't limit the length of the response, it can just start spitting out information and it just goes on and on and on and on and on. So it's good to tell it, you know, your response should be 150 words 
It should be five bullet points. It should be written in the present tense, in the past tense. So just, you know, giving it all that information. And one thing to understand is that, um, yes, you can have a killer prompt, but it might not be killing <laughs> that well. And so in that way, you probably need to go back and make some modifications. And so this flow chart here just demonstrates that, um, yes, if you have the perfect prompt first and it works, then great, you know, use it. But if it doesn't and you need to um, tweak it a little bit, then do it, you know, and run it again and see if now it's something that you're looking for. And if it works, great. If it still doesn't work, then just continue and dialogue with AI. Like, well, okay, so, so far it's good, but I actually meant for something else. So now just give me this, this small, you know, mod modified uh, part of my lesson plan or my assignment description. So having that dialogue. And then even if that's not perfect, then that's when you do the manual editing. So you can just copy all that information and then you go in and then manually um, edit what it gives you. But still, it will give you probably enough to, to work with. Um, now, this is something that I tried out because I watched some tutorials um, sadly, they were about the Microsoft Copilot Pro version, but I thought, well, I'll see what the standard version can do. And so what I did, I said, okay, here's the workshop. So I gave it today's workshop description. And I said, now write an email to invite university staff and faculty to attend this workshop. And it did a pretty good job. So the layout is nice. And um, that's something that, you know, you can try it as try out as well. So, you know, you can see if now if, you know, if I wasn't happy with the first draft of email, I could have gone in and said, well, OK, so I don't want you to say this. I want you to say so I could have had the dialogue, but I thought that um, this was, you know, this was good enough. And that's exactly what people normally recommend. Like, you know, if you, if you have to, if you have the information, um, instead of paying for an assistant who will write the email for you <laughs> or spending, uh, 30 minutes to, to come up with the, the best words, you can help, you know, you can, you know, reach out to AI and ask for help. Yes, Karen. Thanks, Christina. Yeah, just a thought. Did this come up with a new idea or ideas that you might not have included? Or was it just simply it did it in 15 seconds and you didn't have to spend 20 minutes on it? Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, I just watched a, a tutorial on Microsoft Copilot and how, you know, for what uses, uh, are out there and then somebody said well you know if you have to write an email or if you have to write many emails you're a program director or you're a marketing manager or you know whatever um try to do this you just feed it all the information and then it will just give you the perfect format and at this point you know this is this is where uh we're going back to the prompting right, right. so this is when you can say well i want um you know, I, I want my email to follow whatever format, or let's say if it's not an email, a memo. Right. I'm curious, did you tweak it or did you prompt it to be somewhat persuasive? So it has elements of, so charge up your laptops and come along on this educational adventure. The word exciting is there. Um, was that something it did on its own or you prompted it to be persuasive? Um, the first one was kind of more bland. This one I said, you know, convincing or encouraging, something like that. So okay. I did give an adjective, like, okay. you know, <laughs> I want people to, yes, yeah. And I used the uh, the creative mode. You use creative mode. Okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not just like summary or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I use the creative one. Maybe the more balanced of it would have been like, if you want. Yes. <laughs> or just kind of just. We're not pushing. Dispassionate. 
information yeah. only. Here's what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And, you know, this is when it just takes a few minutes just to click on the different mode and see, you know, the difference between the tone. Um, and so what I would like to emphasize is that, um, I mean, I, I do say instructional design, and I by no means want to take away the job of the instructional designers, <laughs> but sometimes we just don't have the time to schedule a full you know, hour workshop or appointment with an instructional designer, but this is a good uh, first step. So if you want to um, re- write your lesson plan, rewrite your lesson objectives, your grading rubrics. Um, if Or if you are uh, a person who designs workshops um, or presentations, or even if you have to submit, you know, grant applications, just for a lot of admin purposes, I would say, you know, AI can be uh, very helpful and Copilot does a pretty good job. So it's, and I would say that if you do that, you probably want to be in the more precise or in the more balanced mode. So, you know, one of those two. Um, so something that I did, and uh, you can just actually go ahead and compare. So if you have a link to my presentation, this is gonna be slide number 18. So this is slide number 18. Uh, I gave the same prompt to ChatGPT as I did to Copilot. And I'll show you both. Oh. Sorry, it kicked me out. It still makes me laugh when they say verify you're a human. Okay. <laughs> um, right. So I told um, AI, so I gave it a prompt, right? So I, I teach first year freshman college students. They need to create a blog using Flip, which is integrated in Canvas. I'm giving it all the information so it knows um, they need to do a blog assignment their key takeaways from the co-curricular activity. It needs to be three minutes long. They need to include images and they should be creative about their recording. And so there's, um, you know, there's, there's all the inf information that I want it to keep in mind as it helps me design um, the assignment description for this vlog assignment. And, and so this is what it did. Okay, so this is what ChatGPT did. Started with the learning objectives, the instructions, step by step. Now I realized, okay, uh, you know, I was I was not specific enough about the the grading, so I went back and I, as you can see, second time around, my prompt is longer. Because then I said, okay, listen, <laughs> there are some, there's some more specific information that I want you to include. And so, you know, th this is, if you remember going back to the, um, the flow chart about the prompting. So the adaptation, well, they don't work out the first time. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for. So going back and, you know, let's just redesign the, the prompt. And so this time around, it did a better job and gave me um, a better response. And then I started the dialogue. Okay, now I need you to edit the learning objectives and replace, replace there to yours. So then as the students read it, it's not gonna say the students and there, it's gonna say you, you know, you need to do this and you. So then it, it went back and, and did that. So that was nice. And, um, and because I made sure earlier that I told it that, listen, you know, it's maximum 10 points. So revise the grading rubric, rubric as well. 
it did a really nice revision with the grading rubric too. Now, um, going back to Microsoft Word, I mean, Word Copilot. So Copilot also, did well. So I gave it the same prompt. And the result was pretty similar. Christina, can you make that a tiny bit bigger? Say it again? Make it a tiny bit larger? Uh, yes. Thanks. I liked how it actually emphasized that it should be three minutes long, so it's in bold and include images in bold, because I didn't give it that instruction, but I thought, oh, if I didn't think about it now, next time I will say, make sure that you emphasize these words in the lesson description or the assignment description. And so it came up with this grading rubric Now, just to move into um, the actual, because those are just screenshots of, um, of the, the response, but I also copied and pasted the full conversation that I had with Microsoft Copilot. Like I said, that's the downside of using uh, Copilot. My preference was um, you know, towards chat GPTs that you can just copy the link and then share the link. With Copilot, you have to copy <laughs> everything or take screenshots so that it's not as um so when i had that full conversation then yes i was copying and then again went back tweaked the prompt just like with chat gpt went in there and did the manual editing and then my manual editing is basically when i designed the grading rubric to look like what I actually want wanted it to, you know, to look like. So that post dialogue manual editing ended up like that. Um, so what I would encourage you to do next is um, if you have an assignment, an existing assignment, and you think that um, maybe some part of it, the grading rubric, the lesson objective, uh, objectives or the description itself could be tweaked in the next five minutes. Uh, go ahead and try it out. And then please report back. Let us know how AI is doing. Christina, did you like the output from Copilot better or from ChatGPT better and why? Um. So I am actually biased towards ChatGPT, but only because I pay for the ChatGPT4 version. Mm -hmm. And so it's better. I would say that, you know, we could have this conversation if I tried at Copilot Pro. So the then maybe GPT, I would be torn in between the two. Got it. So the ChatGPT, that's, that's a good observation. In a way, you're not comparing apples with apples in a way you're comparing apples and oranges mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right right but because i'm already paying for chat gpt4 right um you know before copilot really existed right um so i'm not going to have another subscription <laughs> right right thank you for that Yeah, I mean, with you know, with Copilot, when you have that conversation, then um, you know, at the end of the day, and this is this is to me the one that's not as uh, attractive. Um, you can't share or you can't really save your chats as easily as you can with with ChatGPT. You still can; it's just it's a longer process. 
Oh, I wanted to ask you that. So I didn't save that first assignment you gave us to do. Is it, it and I've now back search? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that you on? can, yeah, I don't think that you can go back to it. Okay. With chat GPT, it saves. I noticed that, yeah. yeah. But with Copilot, is it using that notebook function or something where you would cut it and paste it into that or save it to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't automatically do it. Yeah. Uh, now, let me show you something that um, is actually neat. And as opposed to ChatGPT, because with ChatGPT, you have to pay for number four, I believe, if you want to use this uh, option. But with Microsoft Copilot, you can do it for free. And that's the image creation. And so, for instance, this is what I did for uh, for a class. So I went into the chat function. So this, this, is, was, this was in the creative mode. And I said, as you can see, there's the prompt, create um, an image of a situation where two people are talking. It's at the business expo. One of them is an older woman from Japan. The other one is a younger man from Peru. And um, in, in a class that I teach called Intercultural Understanding, the students were uh, analyzing different cases and those were sort of, you know, intercultural misunderstandings and, and something happened and we just, I just wanted to find some images to illustrate <laughs> the situation and just make sure that, you know, the students could see that there was a disappointment or confusion on the faces. Um, and so once I prompted Microsoft Copilot and gave me four images and uh, and I just thought that probably this one was the best and uh, maybe this one could have been also acceptable but I just thought that this image was uh, was probably better And uh, and the next prompt was pretty much the opposite is when when people are trying to negotiate um, the interaction or the the details of their intercultural interaction. And then so we had this other image. Now, of course, by the time I showed this to the students, they were way ahead of me and they're, oh, yeah, yeah we, we use. Dolly for presentations all the time. That's yeah. And I am impressed. Like those students who use AI uh, to create images, they they have they they are skilled. Like they, they really know how to prompt it to come up with mind blowing images. The only thing that I had to teach them is not to include words because one thing that AI can't do, or maybe we just don't know how to. Um, but it can spell properly. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but for instance, if you wanted to spell the word create, then it would probably include like three E's and I don't know, two C's at the beginning. It's really, really strange. And I have no idea what's behind that. So I tell students like, you know, tell it not to include any words on the images at all. And Christina, is Dolly part of my of Microsoft? Is it embedded in Copilot? I think it's Dolly, yes. I see where it says powered by Dolly on the bottom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, course, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna say no, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, you know, that you guys can go ahead and and try to give it a prompt and see if it gives you some images. Maybe maybe there's an assignment and you can illustrate it. Even if you say, even if the assignment, let's say the students want to, um, or they need to work on a flowchart, or um, 
you know, so, something and they just want to illustrate it and just add that image. To your point about students, and I think I was riffing off of what Katie Hutt put maybe in here is we as faculty and staff have access to this. What do students have access to from the university? I think they have access to this as well because you sign in with your Microsoft Outlook account. At least when I ask students to use Copilot, they just use their AI, AI Outlook account and they sign in. Okay. But the reality is that 99% of them are on ChatGPT. And it would be interesting to find out how many of our students are actually paying for um, GPT-4. I think right now it's probably less than half. But yeah, that, that would be a really nice, you know, survey to, to have. It would be interesting to, to see. So yeah, you know, try it out and create an image and, and let us know how, how it goes. You can even show us some of those images. And see, this is the pro versus standard Microsoft uh, Copilot. With the standard Copilot, you click on the image and you can, I guess you can take a screenshot and then copy the image with the pro version. You can definitely download it so it's the highest resolution. And there's also a button that you click on share and it gives you sort of the citation format as well for sharing the image or for uh, documenting the image. But it doesn't do that for you for free. I mean, can, you can still say, you know, do it manually. So I had it rewrite my assignment here um, <laughs> the, to your prompt. It's pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> and then I had it rewrite my assignment to allow for the use of Copilot and and to ask students to cite properly. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I'm uh, it's it's pretty impressive. It's like you have a you know an assistant for yeah, yeah, free. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, it's pretty, yeah. I keep telling people, I wish somebody invented an AI that does the dishes, walks the dogs, and <laughs> I want that AI. I'll pay for it. <laughs> and speaking of images, um, and um, I don't think Anna is here anymore, but um, so each month when I do the, the AI, um, a faculty fellow message. I don't know how many of you are getting these messages. Uh, if you haven't been, let me know and I can email you. So these are sort of infographics that I, I put together with tips. And, um, and so Anna always asks me, okay, but can you provide the alt text version, the accessible? And first I was so frustrated because I'm thinking I'm not, like, I don't know how. <laughs> I can probably say, you know, on the top, corner of the picture, you can see, but I'm like, I, I don't know what it means. And so, um, so I was sitting there thinking, I'm so stupid. Why, why don't I ask AI? I mean, and then it did a really good job. So I gave Microsoft Copilot um, this picture. And this is actually a flow chart that I designed for my students and showed all my students during week one before they start sending those AI made emails that are a page long and are crazy. And I think uh, Ben once told me that um, that he got um, an email from an international student that was clearly written by AI. And so, yeah, so I'm, I started getting those, yeah, those <laughs> AI written emails. And so I thought, yeah, we're gonna stop that before they start happening. And so I showed my students this flow chart. And, you know, should I send an email to my teacher written by an AI chatbot like ChatGPT? And, um, 
And I, I hope that, you know, my point was made because I would say I haven't been receiving any AI emails since. So then I had to go and tell them, but please use Grammarly or WordTune or something because the sentences should still make sense. <laughs> so it's, you know, negotiating the, the emailing business. Uh, but anyway, so I uploaded because with Microsoft Copilot, you can actually, with the standard free version, you can upload an image and you can ask AI to do something with that image. And so what I did, I said, provide the alt text for this image. And this is what it provided. And I thought, okay, not bad, not bad, but not exactly what I'm looking for. So then I said, okay, can you provide a step-by-step -step description? Because I'm sure that this is what people meant. Um, I guess the next step, and I, I didn't provide uh, a slide for that, but the final step, I, I would have to do some manual editing because the all caps is not helping. <laughs> so I, again, I'm not trained in uh, accessibility, but I'm told that uh, when you provide an all text uh, version, then don't use all caps. But because AI was looking at my flow chart and it saw that, you know, some words were all caps, that's what it pulled. But so um, uh, I went in and the manual editing is me changing the all caps to, you know, lowercase. But I would say that it's it's a fantastic job. Now, someone who's trained in accessibility should tell me if it's a fantastic job. But to me, I just thought, wow, this was actually pretty good. Yeah, Ben, to your note about how incredibly nice the thank you note was, I, I'll, I'm going to out myself. I almost welcome seeing more difficult language that isn't 100% correct and some typos as evidence that the student actually made the effort to do it themselves and didn't just plug it into a machine. Now, that's, like I say, my bias where I am in my AI journey that I want students to know how to write a nice thank you note. So maybe, Karen, you should design a flowchart that says... Do you want to send, are you thinking about sending your teacher a nice thank you note? Right. Do you want to do three AI now? How about yourself? Yeah. These There's are the, the steps. steps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But there, my bias is I'm choosing ideas of authenticity and, and struggle over ideas of just, hey, I know I should write thank you notes. Let me just get this out quick. Mm hmm mm hmm Yes. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm with you. And... Okay, so one cool thing is this. Um, if you if you look at the search, well, not the search box, but the chat uh, box, if you're on the Microsoft Copilot page, so at the bottom, you can see a microphone. And go ahead and try it out and see what it can do. <laughs> because the the great thing about the again it's the free the free version you can actually talk to it and once it was done with that flow uh, with uh, describing the flow chart i thanked it and i said okay now can you read the step by step description back to me and it was reading it back to me So what you can do is if you have an image somewhere saved, you can just upload the image and you can even ask Microsoft Copilot, can you describe what's in the image? Or you can go ahead and just, you know, ask it to read something back to you that you upload or you know, respond to you in the spoken version. And I just thought that that's, you know, that would be really good to use with my um, English language learners. I don't know how many languages Microsoft Copilot speaks. That's something that I should look into. 
but I thought that it, if it speaks multiple languages, then maybe this is something that uh, the the word languages department could use. Just you know, ask students to sit down and chat with AI about something. And speaking of language learners, so this is another really good thing that AI can or Microsoft Copilot can do. Um, so for instance, we were talking about intercultural communication competencies. And, um, and so there was a question in the textbook that said, why is it problematic if an in an intercultural situation, some participants are linguistically weaker than others. And although the students in that course are pretty good, their English language level is pretty high. I just thought, well, okay, <laughs> maybe it would be a mouthful. So then I asked uh, Microsoft Copilot, okay, can you simplify the question? Rewrite the question for English language learners. And if you compare the two questions, um, I thought that the second question was um, was definitely one for the students to understand. Why can it be a problem if some people don't speak the language um, as well as others in a situation where different cultures are involved? Now, of course, you know they had a, a description of the sort of the, the case itself above the question, so they they understood. Uh, what it was, but I just thought that, again, simplifying the language um, can be important. Um, another thing that I did next, and I should have copied it here, I said, okay, break this question down into two simple questions. Um, and so, the, you know, that's another thing that, that if you think that, for instance, um, Textbooks might have uh, more complex questions, encourage students, okay, type that question in there. And they don't have a type, they can just click on the microphone button, right? So now we know that it's, it's not all about the, the 10 fingers. Um, and just ask AI to, to simplify the question itself. It's interesting that it's somehow new that an English language learner needed a simpler version <clears throat> because mm -hmm. you didn't say rewrite this question more simply mm -hmm. it kind of knew that right it knew that was the linguistic yeah the response yeah the linguistically appropriate response yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i've done that before if there was an assignment um which I thought maybe it was written for um, my complex problems freshman. And, and I thought, well, you know, it needed just a little bit of work because it was for my level six academic discussion course, you know, something similar um, in nature. And I just asked um, ChatGPT at that time, but Microsoft Copilot does the same thing. So AI to, to simplify, you know, make it shorter, make the sentences shorter and uh, and easier to understand. And it does that. And I would say that, um, again, I don't have any training in learning disabilities, but I think that there are so many opportunities here to, um, to chat with AI. Okay, I have, um, I have students with whatever you know learning disabilities how do i rewrite this assignment so then it matches their needs and um and because we want to make sure that we're not doing something crazy of course it's good to reach out to 
learning specialist and just verify like, is this really the way to go? <laughs> but I think it's good if we go to that learning specialist and then very, you know, have them verify what we already created as opposed to just, you know, let's start from scratch. <laughs> um, again, it's saving time and, and being more efficient. Christina. Yes. At risk of talking too much <laughs> in this setting, I'm sorry. I need to run. Okay. But I wondered if you minded if I told the attendees today about our AI in education and in the workplace event for next Tuesday and put a link in the chat in case anyone's interested. Yeah, I think that would be great. Yes. I know because you know about it and I know you're coming, which I'm so grateful. But for the rest of you, uh, I direct the Center for Professionalism and Communications at COGOD. And we have a series called Future of Work Conversations. And the one on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, March 5th, from 1115 to 1215, features two COGOD professors talking about how they are involving AI, both in their research and in their class activities for students currently. One is a negotiations professor, one's a finance professor. And then we have a young alum who is coming back to talk about how she's using in the workplace some analytics and some summaries uh, functions mainly for her work um, for Priorities USA, which helps to make purchases of political ad campaign buying. So the, I'm putting the um, link. I don't want to take up any more Christina's time because I know she's got some things to finish up. But there it is. And if you come in person, we'll feed you lunch. There's a buffet lunch. So Christina, thanks as always. I hate to run. This has been so interesting. Thank you, Karen. I'll see you on Tuesday. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Uh, so one thing too that I wanted to add here is uh, if you have a course assignment and I know that there are so many people who teach certain courses and they kind of teach um, sort of like an introductory level of that course for their complex problem courses or habits of mind or, you know, any of these um, sort of 100 level courses. And so maybe you want to look at those assignments and see, oh yeah, how would I modify that? Because, you know, I'm, I'm using something in a 600 level course or a 400 level course. So how do I modify that? So then it can um, actually reach my population of that, you know, the 100 level course in, um, um, in my whichever course. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's, that's another uh, option, something to keep in mind, you know, how, how do you rewrite some of those assignments? Like I kind of want students to learn this, but they are not graduate students, they are undergraduate students, they are freshmen, so how do I tweak it? And um, an AI can be, you know, Microsoft Copilot can be pretty helpful. Um, let me just show you one activity that I did, and this was to, re to redesign uh, existing grading rubrics. So I gave uh, Microsoft Copilot uh, an existing grading rubric. And I said, you know, add some items into the grading rubric. Um, and it's because I wanted students to use AI as they completed the task. But of course, I wanted the students to be transparent about it and, and whatnot. And I know that, uh, and the assignment was an annotated bibliography, you know, writing an annotated bibliography. Um, and so, We've talked a lot about this, how, you know, always ask students to, um, to acknowledge the use of AI and so on. But I found that unless I actually put those items in a grading rubric, not everybody was acknowledging. <laughs> and, and sometimes they told me that they used it, but they didn't write it down. They didn't actually attach that disclaimer. Although we clearly said on Canvas, you know, add the disclaimer now. So I just thought, okay, so it's going to be part of the grading rubric, and then the students will have that clear message that I wasn't just joking. 
Uh, and again, if you are um, here, so if you are looking at my slides, this is slide number 32. Uh, and so the original annotated bibliography grading rubric um, was basically the yellow, the blue, the green, and the pink parts. Okay, so that was the original annotated bibliography. And this was like a typical items that you expect in an annotated bibliography. And then I asked AI to add those AI related items because I really wanted students to understand that whatever uh, a chatbot suggests to them, they actually critically evaluate it. So there's written response to that, that they can demonstrate the, the ethical use of AI, that it didn't, that they didn't let AI to sort of take over and do it for them, but they they use that as an assistant, just like I would use AI as an assistant in my um, lesson design, for instance. Um, and so you can see additional items in the grading rubric now. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, six items. So depending on the, the type of assignment you have, you know, this could be just one item, two or three. So it doesn't have to be this long. Um, I guess the reason why I included so many items in this grading rubric was because it was actually writing, it was an annotated bibliography. And this was one of the first occasions where students were encouraged to use it for their writing. And I just wanted to make sure that things were not getting out of hand, <laughs> that we, you know, we would understand how to leverage to use. Uh, and if you look at this slide, then here's a link to the actual um, assignment and the grading rubric. So there's um, there's that. And so let me just close uh, today's workshop with um, with this slide right here. And I took this picture from. A website it's called ditch that textbook and uh, this was last year when they started listing different uses of um, of ai in the classroom and of course it says chat gpt because back then when this was released chat gpt was pretty much the only <laughs> um ai chatbot out there by now we know that you know there are multiple ones there's gemini there's claude ai so there, there are um, multiple ones, but if you just look at the 20 different tips, I think that it's pretty good. Um, and what I would like to, to do is to encourage you to explore uh, or even just to identify how many of these 20 different tips you could use. Um, and not necessarily in the classroom, you can use it for, you know, for your own good as well. Um, and let me just highlight number five here, ask it for feedback for student work. Um, I don't use AI for grading, but especially if I feel that I might be biased, for instance, you know, you might have students, they are so very good, but sometimes, you know, there could be that off day when their submission is just not that great. And when I'm thinking, oh, I feel like giving them a good grade, but no, nah, it doesn't feel like it's great that, you know, it's that perfect. And and I can just share the assignment and the grading rubric and then put it into, feed it into Copilot or ChatGPT and say, you know, what do you think about the assignment? How would you grade it? And sometimes it pretty good, it does a pretty good job it might even highlight certain items in the assignment that I could have overlooked. And, you know, it just, it can keep you on your toes. Like, oh yeah, mm -hmm. there are some missing parts. Maybe it's not an A. So 
But yeah, so please take a look at the list of 20 items. And then just think about what you can do. Um, Katie? Hi, thanks, Katrina. This was super helpful. I asked this in the chat and, and you may not know, but I'm just really curious. Do, do we have access to a version that's like slightly better than the regular free version because we're Microsoft Canvas or is our version like the same that anyone can access? Our version is the free standard version that anyone can access. Okay. Or well, I would say anyone with a Microsoft account, but yeah, we're not paying. Unfortunately, AU is not yet paying for the pro version. Yeah, no, I know that. I guess I was wondering if there is like a slightly better version for Microsoft account holders than for not. But, but no. maybe yeah. I mean, I can I can see that they are updating even the standard version. Um, if you're looking at where was that? Let me see. So like if you're in copilot and you ask a question, you can, there's even a, where was the link? Oh yeah, here's the notebook. Mm -hmm. So with the regular co-pilot, you only have 2000 um, words or characters. I can't remember, no characters that you can write feet mm -hmm. at a time. And that's what they say that they want to limit that yeah. uh, the information because they don't want the, um, um, the crashing and whatnot. With if you click on notebook, then it gives you a lot more. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you can actually do and it, it's almost like you can you can kind of work on the side yeah. <laughs> with um with the chat bot. So that's you know, that's neat. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, but unfortunately there's there's nothing there's nothing at about you know paying for them. <laughs> for the pro version, although that would be, that would be beautiful. Because once you see what pro can do to you, oh, <laughs> I mean, it can literally browse through your email and you can tell uh, pro co-pilot that's an embedded in Outlook, um, you know, browse through the last five emails that I got from this student. What was our conversation? Maybe that's someone who, you know, who had an issue and then you just want to have a recap before they come to the office or, you know, you're preparing a project with colleagues and then, okay, what was the last, I don't know, 10 back and forth conversations. I mean, it's just amazing. That's cool. That's really cool. Thank you. So hopefully at some point. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And I think Lindsay will probably, you know, share the link at some point. All right. So thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>